Hello everybody, this is Maniac 4 Bricks. That closet is empty, and I'm just going around the room to show what else I need to take care of. There's still the basement and the garage. I have some stuff in, but it's not, you know, completely full in either direction. And, uh, let's go down to the floor. Because <laughs> that's where a lot of stuff is. That still needs to be boxed up in some way. And somehow figure out a place to put it when it's moved down the shore. Most of it probably going in some kind of storage. But I'm, I'm glad I got everything out of the closet so I know in this space what to work with. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff, but I do have, you know, a whole bunch of boxes roughly that size. So they're a little bit taller than what's mostly around here. And uh, I got a lot of them. <laughs> I've been using them even from the other boxes that have been moved around. I don't think I'm going to need everything. It will probably get downsized and whittled out. Um, whether or not things work. Or they're just not appealing to me. But I did want to do this video because I found something in one of these boxes. That I remembered and wanted to share with you. It's a little behind the scenes if you may. And that is right here. So this little box was from Philly Brick Fest, I believe 2018, if I remember correctly. Uh, I will have updated information in the description down below if I got anything wrong in the video, so check that for any updates. This little box had these models in it. It was the main purpose of what I put in there and probably a bunch of other extra pieces. And these pieces just wound up in there at some point. I don't know why Professor Quirrell got separated from them, all the other Harry Potter stuff. It just happened that way. Uh, this box was from Philly Breakfast because they had a special opportunity one year in which, you know, after paying for an exhibitor fee to display at the convention, you could also go to the Lego store nearby for an additional $10, $15 or something like that. And you can get a box like that to fill up with Lego parts from the pick a brick wall and from... A whole bunch of Tupperwares that they had other random Lego pieces in from other things. I'm not sure why, not sure how, but still good to grab. Still fun to take a look through. Um, this was done before opening hours at that Lego store on a Saturday. And it was also including a um, monthly mini build, like those poly bags. Um, or pick a model, one of those kinds of things. I got two of them. I think some other people got two. Because I remember I got a car with a gas a gas pump. And then I got a frog, kind of like a frog prince, because he was wearing a crown. So it was kind of cool. My purpose of using this box and the parts from it was to make prototypes for a Patreon reward tier. Now, I've had a Patreon since about 2017. Not fully launched until maybe... 2019, 2020, thereabouts, um, mostly 2020. And with that, I was trying to come up with, at the time, you know, I was still new to Patreon, but I still knew of other people who made Patreon or had other crowdfunding, things like that. And I knew that it was important to have some kind of rewards, some kind of exclusive items that would be available there to thank the patrons for their support. You know, whatever amount that they were going to contribute every month. And my thinking was, if I was going to do this for my LEGO YouTube channels, I was going to have one tier that was going to have every month a different model that they would get in the mail, they get the instructions with it, get all the parts for it, and would be able to build this and kind of have a little vignette series. I use the word vignette even though it's probably, I don't know if there's a standard as far as vignettes go in LEGO, I usually don't build vignettes to this standard, but I still consider this as such because it's a part of a scene, not the entire scene, um, which many of my other ones and other sizes have done. And I've also built something like this in the past before with the Collectible Minifigure Series ten, uh, series 1 in 2010. I built them on a 4x8 plate, and each minifigure has its own background, a little uh, place to put their accessories, maybe something to interact with, you know, very simple stuff, but it was still very cool. 
So these are prototypes for what could have been for that. At the time, that Patreon account was for the Brick Theorists, which was a brand new, unique idea from me as far as videos go, and I've been continuing some of them since then, and I would love to continue them even nowadays. Um, basically, each of the tiers, each of the um, the monthly builds from these would have a minifigure included with them, and would have a small build, again with instructions, and would... Um, offer some kind of scientific or observational or research kind of vignette. You know, these kinds of things you could pair together or put into, you know, any other scenes or any other mocks or whatever it may be. Uh, the minifigures, I believe at the time I was sourcing those from the build a minifigure section of the Lego store, but not a lot of parts were obtained. And I wasn't sure how many of them I would continue, you know, going forward. Like, how many months of these would I make? As well as how many copies of each would I make, you know? I wanted to be sure that I had enough parts to source for it, so that way I didn't run short of anything, or I wasn't fumbling to get the next one out. Keep in mind, this was never done. This was never a program that was ever installed up to this point. I've considered it many times, or other models even, and I don't know if I'll consider it in the future. Can't promise on that. But... It's still a neat idea, so I wanted to try to review these in retrospect a couple of years later. So starting off with the first one, put the, <laughs> the screwdriver down. Starting off with the first one, it's basically a bulletin board with a swivel chair. It's got enough room on there to fit a minifigure. And very simple for the style of the chair itself. I think it could have probably been a bit taller to give it that computer chair kind of look to it. Um, still fine for just having a function to it that you can move this around, whether you want to have the figure standing behind it or have them turning to see the board, whatever the case may be. These are all built on four by six plates. And keep in mind, again, this was sourced from parts mostly from the pick a brick wall at the time. And, uh, it's got a couple of pieces to hold this bulletin board in place with a couple of bolts put into it, you know, thumbtacks kind of thing. I don't know if it was going to have a newspaper tile that would have been nice to add in here just to get a little bit more of that research look to it. I mean, even my bulletin board right here, it's got a lot of papers on it and a lot of thumbtacks. So maybe that would have been cool. Who knows? Next up, this one actually has two different versions because of what I was sourcing for the parts from the... Again, keep in mind, this was from what I was trying to gather in the Lego store from one visit and hoping that I could make a couple of models and a couple of copies. So, so I was literally building these in the store and then figuring out, okay, I need to find all these pieces, you know, and, and multiple copies of these pieces. I was like, I wasn't the first one in the store, but it was pretty early on, and I was the last to leave, <laughs> or one of the last to leave. Uh, constantly moving back and forth, trying to put these things together, because it sounded like a really cool idea. So this one is like an outdoor research area, hence the green base plate. Um, it has what looks like either a lamp or a microscope. I think it was going for a microscope. And you could either use this lever as where to look through to see the specimen up close or as a way of magnifying it, you know, changing the lens or something like that, you know, in an imaginative setting. Uh, the specimen being in blue on like a petri dish and having a light above it for the the microscope, I guess. Kind of a simple design. A lot of these are a simple design. You could probably build these from parts sitting around your, your table. Now, the interesting thing about the tree, I really did like having these, these little pieces. They were some of my favorite Lego elements um, in reddish brown. <laughs> I don't know many other places that had them. Uh, not that it's rare or anything, but I never really observed that. I was like, oh, that's cool, and I could use it. It looks great with the tree um, to start building up the, the roots and the trunk. The thing is, at some point, I didn't find a lot of the 1x2 bricks in reddish brown. I don't know if they just weren't available, or I just was looking in the wrong bin. So, I had actually come up with a second edition of this model that's just built out of 2x2 two two plates. Just six of them. Stacked on top. Yellow? Wait, are you staying over tonight? No, I'm not staying over tonight. 
I'm gonna pack more stuff in the car and head back. Okay. Are you bringing any air mattresses with you? Uh, no, I'm not really sure. I got pillows in here, but sleeping bags or I'll figure something out later. I might be able to use a mattress. I'll figure it out later. So yeah, the other one was a little bit more basic than it should have been. I mean, stacking a whole bunch of plates like that is not only infuriating if you're trying to remove them or use them elsewhere, but it's a really boring, really boring thing. Yeah, you get a lot of texture because of all the, the rivets between them, but it's not great. I mean, this is not great because it's only a handful of them, but... Is, is plus or minuses I'm not really sure about. Should it have had texture? Probably. I mean, if I had a bunch of these in reddish brown, that might have worked a little better. And then the third one I came up with was more of a sci-fi lab table sort of thing with these movable lamps. So they're all a mix of ball joints or toe ball ball joints, mini ball joints, whatever you want to call them. That you can move back and forth to observe something whether it's really small or really large. The idea was also to fit all of this inside of a 4x6 perimeter, not just on the plate itself, but not to stretch much beyond it. So that way, if they needed to be on a, you know, on a desk or something and you wanted to pair them all together in some way, then you could, you know, without too much overlap. And theoretically, they would have had a few other ones that were not only going horizontally, but vertically. So anyways, um, originally I had intended this to hold a 2x4 red brick because it's a staple of Lego and I thought that would just be fun. However, it doesn't really fit too well. I have a blue one to use here, but the same you know, size of brick. And you really have to move each of these components out to place it on there. And even when you do, you can't move the lamps too much inward to see it. So maybe it would have worked better if the lamps were taller or had another joint to bend around it either that or i would have to use a smaller brick like a two by two brick and this one is in red as the observation as as the sample the specimen or whatever i did like the sci-fi look on the floor having those pieces is really cool um but it is a very basic table you know basic function and again, remember that these would each have minifigures to go along with them. So this never really became a thing. And I don't know if it will become a thing, even in the near future, whether it's these actual designs or something improved. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these, even as mini mocks. I think they're still, you know, they're okay. But now that we have a whole lot more parts available and a lot more advanced building techniques, I would prefer using something more interesting. I mean, right off the side here, I'm building something out of just stray parts. And that already, as a lamp, could be more interesting. Or, you know, if it's standing upright, could be more interesting um, to use. Because these are a little too, too basic. And trying to feel out um, who would be interested in a program like this, a reward tier like this on Patreon, I don't think they're going to like that these are so basic for models, you know? That there's literally no value out of the parts that haven't already been in their collections or are very easy to find, uh, whether or not from Pick a Brick or anywhere else. I still like the idea of building some kind of miniature models, um, whether or not they're for Patreon itself. But again, I'd love to hear what you guys think, whether or not this will actually become a thing I, is yet to be seen. But it was at least fun to look back on this little memory. And uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.